He's a sole proprietor of the, the lounge Petworth Cigars in DC, right? That's correct. And you've owned the lounge for almost three years. Three November years. will be three years. Okay. And it, I think you have a pretty interesting story of how you opened a cigar lounge. Absolutely. How did you how did you Absolutely. end up owning your own cigar lounge? I ended up owning my own cigar lounge because in 2016 my father had a stroke and he had properties that I had to take care of and so Petworth Cigars was my second adventure and what I did was gut it, got permits and was able to get it built out in two years time. Yeah. So I opened in November 2020. 2020. What a year to open. <laughs> what a year to open During a retail COVID. shop. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And we have a lot of requirements that we had to follow, but we got through it. Right. And it has just been successful. Um, I love selling cigars. I love the combination of spirits and cigars. I enjoy teaching seed to smoke and yeah. just having people in the lounge enjoying themselves relaxing just making it a place where there is cigars mm -hmm. <laughs> there are cigars there's camaraderie and there's community yeah and that you were saying that's the saying that's my lounge, motto your motto as we had a trademark yes. cigars camaraderie and community. I love that yeah. you know it's a, a place for people to come and just be together Absolutely. and just relax yes Yes, it's a, it's a family, and right. literally it does become your community. We right. even have ladies who gather. We have the sassy, sexy six that come <laughs> to, get, to come to the lounge always, and they gather, they talk, they eat together, they smoke together, and we just enjoy ourselves. Is, you know, what's going to happen if the sassy, sexy six find a seventh lady that would be interesting? You know, are they, are they capped out? They have to kick somebody out to get. No. <laughs> There's always room to community. grow, right? Yeah. <laughs> Just create a village. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> have to expand. Put an asterisk on it. Absolutely. You know? <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I forgot to ask you at the beginning, what are you smoking? I'm smoking the American. And that's your first one, right? This is my first one. It was given to me by Drew Newman. Yep. And it is an all American tobacco cigar. So I'm enjoying this Lancero. It's beautiful. Did he tell you that that is a special size that he rolls for himself and he only gives to special people? That is not for sale. That is his special stash, that size. I'm sorry, but it's good. So <laughs> you don't have to be friends with Drew. <laughs> <laughs> just, just so you know how, how much he thinks of your relationship. Absolutely. He gave you one of his special stash. Great. It's so we'll, I'll have to check in with you later and see okay. what you think about it. Right. Um, have you ever traveled within the industry? Have you ever gone to different countries? Is there anything that you've learned from that? I've been to both Nicaragua and the DR. Okay. So I went to Nicaragua in February actually on a full tour and educational experience with the different company and it was amazing. Yeah. It was just me and about 20 other guys. Oh we wow. Had a great guys. Time. All guys. <laughs> all guys. Were they all um, shop owners as well? Or were there some, some were consumers, consumers okay. some were retailers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How long were you down there? For was a little less than a week. Okay. Yeah. Did you get to see tobacco fields as well? Oh, I or? went to the field. I was in the barns. I experienced the the rollers, the right. box makers, the entire factory from start to finish. One thing about those trips, we we generally get to go. I'd say before COVID, we'd go like two to three times a year to the Dominican and to Nicaragua. Um, and even being in the industry for as long as I have and being working for a manufacturer, so having intimate knowledge of how much work goes into it, it never ceases to amaze me when you actually are there and you're seeing it and you're reminded. If yes. you start at the tobacco fields and the seed beds and just how many hands, how many people Absolutely. create this cigar. And then for what you sell it for, right? Can you imagine any other product where 200 pairs of hands are making Two, a handcrafted sometimes three right a and handcrafted product and you can buy it for you know i think this cigar is probably like seven dollars on the market but work goes into it craftsmanship yeah. oh yeah so expertise right and i mean you've got the ladies that are rollers you have men that are rollers right. they roll in certain blends for certain product lines right and uh, just even um you know that that's part of my love for the industry is the fact that so many families are impacted exponentially. Right. Um, eight point 
two percent of the women in of uh, people in Nicaragua are women, and therefore they are the ones who are supporting their families. So when we enjoy our cigars, we can right. know that there's exponential impact, and people right. are actually eating. They're they're yeah. living, surviving because we have this luxury luxury product. Right. Not only in the United States, where a lot of the companies are based, but Absolutely. also offshore, offshore in these countries where sometimes the work is a little bit harder to come by, and there's factories full of. 500 to 1,000 people that are working because of this industry. It does make you feel a little bit better about it. It does. <laughs> You're it, makes yeah. it makes me work harder. It makes me work harder. It makes me want to pick out more options and, yeah. and see what else I can sell just to know that I'm helping in the industry and I that know. it's expanding. And it's it's a good good feeling. And there, you know, there's it's interesting. Uh, I, I work for a manufacturer, so my focus is like the company I work for. But I acknowledge that there are so many amazing cigar manufacturers. And I think it's one of the things that makes this in, uh, industry really unique and fun is that we all just kind of coexist and respect each other and think that there's space for everybody, you know? Um, and it, I think it comes from a place of acknowledging that if you like the American and I don't, which I, which I do, <laughs> You have to. This is great. I, no, you're not wrong, right? You're not wrong <laughs> right. to like or not like it. It's right. just not. It's, it's just not what you want. It's subjective. And it's there's something for everybody. Right. And, and if, if I like this, it doesn't mean I'm wrong. Um, if you don't, so um, I think that's why everybody's just kind of like keep making great stuff and working hard, and we'll just we'll we'll make what we like, and people will buy that. And, that's right. I mean, you have enough for everybody. Right. Something different all the way down from Connecticut rappers to Maduro rappers. Yeah. It's all, it's up to the person. Yeah. And everybody says, well, what should I pair it with? Whatever you like. I know. You know? That's a loaded question, <laughs> too. Right? Coffee, tea. Yeah. Bourbon, uh, scotch. I definitely am not somebody that takes pairings very seriously. I'm more like, but I want a white wine right now. So, and I want this cigar, and I'm not really too concerned. Maybe I should be more concerned, but yeah. yeah. Enjoy yourself. Yeah. Life is too short to be bothered. <laughs> so have a good cigar. Yeah. And have whatever libation you want with it. Do you have a go-to cigar that you like to... I go to the humidor. You just go to the humidor. I, I love humidor. that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you definitely have an advantage as a shop owner. It's like, you, it's like you're like a kid in a candy shop. Absolutely. Can, yeah. Every day. And, you know, you, you do need to smoke your product that you're selling to be able to speak on it knowledgeably when people are asking. One at least. Yeah. At least have an idea of what it tastes like. <laughs> you got to be able to speak to it. You yeah. be able to give your customers, you know, a good idea of what they may experience or at least put it in their minds and right. they will be able to translate that themselves. Right. Do you find a lot of people come in looking for recommendations? Absolutely. Yeah. Every day. Mm -hmm. Men, women, and no, I don't lead the women to sweet cigars. Yeah. Nope. Whatever that I feel is reasonable and, and I, you know, after talking with them, you just have to right. get an idea of where they are. Do you go through some like qualifying questions? Like, I do. Yeah. I do. You kind know. of have to understand somebody's palate. What have you had to eat? Right. Have you smoked before? Right. You know. Do you like coffee with cream? Do you like it black? Yes. Yeah some of the basic questions right you know I think sometimes people come in and they just what should I smoke and they think that that's like a simple and we always joke that we're gonna ask you seven questions back before before you make a recommendation because because you don't want to you want people to have a good experience and you want to give them something that they're gonna enjoy not only you know that they're gonna have a great um, conversation and a great relaxation experience if they're kicking back and enjoying a cigar, but you want them to enjoy the flavor as well. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, <laughs> has there been any standout moments for you as a shop owner or, you know, like anything that you're like, memories that kind of stick with you? Well, I really enjoy doing cutting lights. Okay. So that gives, um, our customers the opportunity and the vendor the opportunity to come together and right. communicate about the cigars and you know draw them into it and hopefully get them to buy them yeah <laughs> um, in more of a casual way mm -hmm. with like a conversation yeah. yeah 
So I mean, it's 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 usually good for the lounge to give people experiences right. to create those experiences so that they know um, you know what to expect when they go other places as well. So right. you do your best work, and hopefully they will gain that and go wherever. Yeah. I mean, even if they come back to my shop, it's fine. If they right. don't, at least they will have that experience and right. have something to to uh, as a basis. Yeah. Well, I think your shop sounds like an amazing place. You if I'm ever come. in the DC area, I Absolutely. will. I'll come check it out. Pepper Cigars. Yes. 4203 yes. Georgia Avenue, Northwest Washington, DC. <laughs> 4203 Georgia, Georgia Avenue, Avenue. Northwest Washington, Small plug. DC. <laughs> come anytime. Yeah. We're open seven days a week. All right. Yep. Great. I would love to do that. And if you're in Tampa, we would love for you to come see us. And I was there. You were? When'd yeah, you come? I was rolling cigars in April. Oh, did you like it? I sure did. Oh, good. I sure did. I'm so sorry I missed you. You missed me um, rolling cigars at my lounge. Nice. So. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> Once you get into it, you really get into it. I know, it, so yeah. <laughs> might as well experience it. Yeah, all get all that. in. Yeah. <laughs> but Carol, thank you. Oh, I thank really you. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate you taking the time, hanging out with us today. And thank you, everybody, for joining us. Check out Pet Wars Cigars and we'll see you on the next episode.